Well, when my son was uh, 13 or 14 and was new in high school, it seemed like he didn't want to do anything. He had had all these activities that he was involved in in elementary school. He ran on the track team every year and he'd played soccer since he was five years old and had been involved in various community events. Now it seemed very suddenly he was just bored and he didn't care and those old activities weren't interesting or they weren't cool but it didn't seem to me like anything was beginning to take its place. And I knew there were a lot of clubs and a lot of classes at the school, but he was sitting around bored. And in fact, the only thing that he was interested in was in uh, computer video gaming. And I was getting worried that I was gonna end up with a kid who was a, you know, a total couch potato after having been so athletic. So, you know, in our workshops, we talk a lot about um, communicating with teens through open-ended questions and using family negotiations and having family meetings and getting everybody's point of view and I wanted to talk a little bit about how I was able to do that with my son in this circumstance to try and move things forward in his life. So one night I asked him to um, sit down with me and talk a little bit about some of the things that he might like to do uh, if money were no object. If money were no object, if time were no object, if he could do anything at all, what would it be? And so we generated this list of ideas, things like um, learning electric guitar, doing more rock climbing, trying out paintball, martial, uh, trying martial arts, fencing was another one, flying lessons was another one. I had to bite my tongue for that one because I knew they were expensive, but we were really just trying to generate some, some lists. Um, so then we uh, spent the rest of the evening, he was on the computer looking up where those activities were offered, if they were offered locally, how much they cost. I was a little bit nervous about um, the cost of some of them because, for example, learning to fly a plane I knew would be kind of beyond us, but I really just, just wanted to generate this sense of possibility. Um, and what was kind of neat was over the next few months he tried a lot of them. Some of them stuck for a little while. Uh, he did uh, capoeira for about three months and I thought, wow, this is it. He's found his new passion. He joined a, he joined a studio to do capoeira and it got him interested in the breakdancing crew at his high school. But, you know, then that kind of died off and he did paintball a few times and then that was really, really interesting and I had a bit of a hard time with that because in our family we uh, were so against war toys. When he was little there were no, he didn't, he actually, he wasn't even allowed to own a squirt gun. So um, I had to get my head around what were the things about paintball that he really loved and what were the things that I could support in it. You know, like I, I, beca I, I began to understand, first of all, this is his interest and he was 14 years old, he wasn't seven anymore. And, and he, uh, it was five or six hours outdoors, there was great eye-hand coordination, it was very physically active. So I started being able to get my head around the fact that this was something that he was interested in. And I think even more than just the activities that he tried was the fact that it helped open up for him um, the idea that he could try new things and that he wasn't stuck in this place of, oh yeah, all those things I used to do are boring and not cool, but kind of maybe afraid of trying new things. So uh, it was really, it was really helpful. And one of the things that I think uh, is important in that is the sense that I got of of uh, the importance of supporting my kid's passion, helping him find what he loves to do, even when it's something that I, I don't really understand.